Hello everyone. Today I'm going to explain and discuss the solution for question 2 from the recently concluded Pure Math 1, Variant 3, May June 2025. So question 2 is about a geometric progression with a little bit of uh, trigo included as well. I have received some requests uh, to discuss this. Uh, the solution to this question. So uh, let's just go through the question first. Uh, the first two terms of a geometric progression are 4 sine squared theta and 8 sine cubed theta, where theta is an angle such that um, 0 uh, theta until uh, 1 over 6 pi. Basically, theta is between 0 and 1 over 6 pi. Uh, this is in radian. Given that the sum to infinity of the progression is 1 over 2, find the value of theta give your answer in the form sine inverse k or arc sine k where k is a rational number so our aim is to be able to uh, finalize the answer in this now uh, one of the things that you can notice is that since the answer must be in the form of sine inverse of k then our aim is to get our uh, equation to be sine of something sine theta equals a number right because after that theta will be uh, sine inverse of that number so our aim is to get that so uh, of course that will happen because both terms here are, are in sine theta all right so anyway let's just go ahead we know that this is a geometric progression and in geometric progression first term is called a right usually in the uh, mf19 a is the first term so that first term is 4 sine squared theta. Now the second term of a geometric progression is a times r, which is the common ratio. So a times r is uh, a sine cube theta. So just from these two is enough for us to find the common ratio, the r. So all we do is uh, to find the r, we take the second term divided by the first term. And we do that, and if we simplify, we get 2 sine theta. Now before we proceed, right, uh, I know that the question said that given the sum to infinity of progression is 1 over 2, uh, I want you guys to think about, uh, uh, you know, whether sum to infinity even exists for uh, this geometric progression. Uh, as you can see here, r is 2 sine theta. Okay, r is 2 sine theta. Uh, and uh, here it says sum, sum to infinity of progression is 1 over 2, which is, which is a finite number. That means that uh, only when r is between negative 1 and 1 that this sum to infinity will exist okay so uh, just think about the values of theta here between 0 until 5 or 6 right uh, if uh, theta is for example uh, if theta is 0 then r is 0 and that one we can't use uh, if r is sorry if theta is 1 over 6 pi then r will be 2 times 1 over 6 pi and sine of uh, uh, sorry 2 times sine of 1 over 6 pi and sine of 1 over 6 pi is actually half so 2 times half is 1 so that means r will actually be between 0 and 1 right so that means since r is between 0 and 1 not including 0 and also not including 1 that means the sum to infinity will exist okay so we have this we have definitely found the fact that r is going to be uh, between 0 and 1 okay, based on uh, the restrictions on theta. Okay. All right, so anyway, we know that the sum to infinity exists anyways, right? It's finite because it's part of the question. So I just want you to, uh, you know, have this thought running in your mind when you, when you deal with uh, questions like this, when, when you deal with uh, trigo. But always think about what are the possible values of uh, theta. And if you have that going on in your mind as this goes through, uh, it will be much faster for you to reject any answers that are not supposed to be accepted. Okay? So anyway, so now that we get the, the R term and we know that the sum to infinity of the progression is a finite number, then uh, we can then just use the formula for the sum to infinity of a geometric progression. That is, a over 1 over minus r. Okay, sorry, a over 1 minus r. So a is the first term, so we substitute the first term in there, and then r is the common dip, uh, sorry, common ratio. So we substitute that in there as well, and we call this 1 over 2, right? Because it's given that 1 over 2. So now we have an equation in sine theta. 
right, an equation in sine theta. So let's go ahead and make the, get rid of all the fractions, right? We will do a cross multiplication. And when we do that, we'll get this, right? 8 sine square theta equals 1 minus 2 sine theta. All right, very simple now. Uh, this looks suspiciously like it could be a quadratic. So uh, let's move everything to one side, make a zero the other side, and indeed it is a disguised quadratic in sine theta. So we can then go ahead and solve this quadratic. We can factorize it in this case. You can use any other method that you want, uh, any other method that you're most comfortable with, right? But uh, in this one, I'm showing you uh, the factorization, right? So we have 4 sine theta minus 1 times 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. You have zero product principle. Uh, let's say let's say 2 sine theta plus 1 is 0. That's right. If you do that, we'll get sine theta equals negative 1 over 2. We have to reject this one, okay? Because why? The reason is when sine theta is negative, uh, then theta will be larger than pi. Okay, and we already know that theta has to be between 0 and 1 over 6 pi. So we will reject this one. So that means we have to uh, look at the other factor. So from the other factor, we have sine theta equals 1 over 4. Now, uh, notice that, right, uh, if you know the behavior of sine, uh, the sine function, right, sine theta uh, and, uh, and theta itself, right, is an increasing function between 0 and 5 over 2. Okay, between 0 and 5 or 2, sine theta is an increasing function. That means as theta increases, sine also will increase. Okay, sine will also increase. Um, and so, uh, since uh, sine theta is 1 over 4, and this 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 2, right, because sine 5 or 6 here, yeah, sine 1 over 6 pi is 1 over 2 sine theta is 1 over 4. That means, right, this angle theta here must be less than 5 or 6, okay, just from there, right? So that means then, uh, that means our solution, which is theta equals sine inverse 1 over 4, we already know this must be between 0 and 5 or 6 because a larger number here will result, which is 1 over 2, will result in 1 over 6 pi. So, when we have a smaller number between 0 and 5 or 6, that means our angle will be between, uh, sorry, uh, this is a smaller number than half, okay? Smaller than 1 over 2, then that means theta will be between 0 and 1 over 6 pi. So this theta is in between uh, the limits uh, that were res uh, restricting, that is restricting the value of pi, the value of theta. All right. So if you do this carefully, if you do this right, you keep all the restrictions in mind, you will only get one solution and, uh, and your solution uh, is in the form that the question wants. And if you do get theta equals sine inverse 1 over 4, then you have done a good job.